when you look at the equation of an ellipse and you look at the equation of a circle, there's no deny, denying there's some similarities there and there's some connection there that we just can't quite put our finger on, but we know somehow this is um, somehow related to this equation. This is an ellipse and this is a circle here. And, and obviously there's some similarities in their graphs. Obviously a circle is not elongated in one direction or another, but um, but we, there's some just some connection we can't put our finger on. This video, I just wanna just make a, a quick explanation of what that connection is. Uh, if you start with the equation of a circle, and you divide both sides by r squared. So we'll divide this side by r squared, and we'll divide this side by r squared. Maybe we'll just divide each individual term by r squared. Then you would get, uh, basically at the end of the day, x minus h squared over r squared plus y minus k squared over r squared equals one. Okay, so that actually looks very, very similar to an ellipse. But now think about it. What what were the A and the B identifying back here in this an equation of an ellipse? The A was the length from the center out to the um, vertex on along the major axis. And the B value was the distance from the center out to the co-vertex on the minor axis. Well, here all we see is that the distance to the vertex and the distance to the covertex is this is the same in fact so usually when you define an ellipse uh, you usually see in most textbooks a condition that a has to be strictly greater than b well the reason that is is if a was equal to b then you would not have really an elongated ellipse you would have a circle and sure enough, what, what is the R value? Well, it's the distance from the center in any direction. So you have this is R and this is R, and one's not longer than another, but really it's, it's like a specific instance of the form of an ellipse.